Welcome back to the show. Today I want to share some thoughts with you on one day I will. One day I will. And the big picture today in this episode is about procrastination. And I don't know if you've ever struggled with procrastination, but I would believe that there are a lot of people around the world that struggle with putting things off that they need to do consistently in order to reach some of their personal goals. So that's kind of like what I want to share with you today. So some specialists believe that there are three types of people who avoid doing what they should be doing. The first one is the avoiders, the avoiders. And the avoiders are people who are more concerned about what other people think about them. And they have either a fear of success or a fear of failure. That's kind of an extreme uh, emotion. But a lot of people are literally afraid of failing, falling on their faces, being embarrassed, uh, being ridiculed for attempting something great, or they're afraid of massive success and what they can do with that amount of success. Essentially, these people don't want to be judged too harshly and they don't want to be really put down by other people who tend to think they're, that they're trying to become something that they're not. And then you have a second group of people who are those thrill seekers. They, they seem to want to do things that are far-fetched and extreme, and they really wait until the last minute to do certain things to get that rush. And I know you know people just like that who do things at the last minute in order to feel a rush in their own lives to realize some sort of goal or dream that they've been trying to achieve for a very long time. And then you have the people that are the timid kind of people, who are the uh, decisional procrastinators, as some would call them. These are individuals who really can't make choices and, and don't take responsibility for their own actions. Now, there are a lot of people out there like that. I would suggest to you maybe half the people that you know are people that are decisional procrastinators. They keep putting off what they need to do consistently because they just don't feel like doing it. Instead of doing it, and then the feelings come. That's really from another show. So it's really important for you and I never to lose the sense of urgency. And then you say, John, how can I not lose the sense of urgency? Well, for me and for a lot of smart people out there that they have an agenda, they have a schedule, they write things down what they need to do every day. Some people would call that a to-do list in order to achieve some things that maybe they really don't want to do. And I, I could go through a list of things that I personally struggle with trying to do consistently, but I know that if I don't write them down, then chances are that I'm not going to be productive in a task that I'm trying to undertake. Let me share an old, old story with you that was told hundreds or thousands of times. There was a group of people that were afraid to undertake some really substantial opportunities in their lives. The leader of this organization, of this team, saw an opportunity to do something extraordinary. And as a result, he became afraid. He was the leader. He was the number one guy on this team. Well, the longer story of this is somebody with no title, somebody with no real important name in that group decided to lead from the back. You say, John, how can you lead from the back? Well, you don't need a title to lead. You don't need to have some sort of designation or some, some sort of college degree if you really want to lead people. Well, this individual saw an opportunity to step up and change the culture of that time. And as a result, it was very strange. The guy in the back of the line was being led by the, by, he was the leader of the entire organization as a result of him seeing an opportunity to make a difference in people's lives that was substantial. So this guy decided to leverage what he knew in his past for the benefit of other people in his future. And if you stop and think about that for just a few minutes, what can you leverage from your past for the benefit of other people? And this kind of goes a little bit more into the procrastination mode. Let me kind of share a, a broader view of that. Many people who are shy, many people who are 
overwhelmed with fears of falling on their face and overwhelmed with, with feelings of being ridiculed for attempting to do great things, they reframe what they're trying to do for the benefit of other people. Think about that a second. There are times in your life, in order for you to pull yourself through some of these scary moments, that you have to do what you need to do, not for yourself, but for the benefit of other people. This can dramatically, dramatically change what you're trying to accomplish in your life and give you such a, a bigger why to get up and do what is really scary. Charles Dickens said, procrastination is the thief of time. Think about that a minute. Procrastination is the thief of time. If you look back in your own life, I can almost guarantee you that you have avoided doing what you need to do and now years and for some of us decades have passed by because you have been afraid to take on certain projects that at the moment were scary. You say, John, what are you talking about? Well, I don't, I don't think I need to explain that because you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have put off doing certain things, whether it's getting in shape, whether it's eating right, whether it's applying for a certain job or, or learning some new skills to get hired in a, in a certain field, we tend to put things off indefinitely that are scary and that are intimidating, and then we wake up one day and we're older, we're gray, and maybe we're not in such good shape, and maybe the opportunity has slipped by years ago because you put it off consistently. One of my early teachers, his name is Dennis Waitley. Dennis Waitley, he said well, many times, he said, quote, time is an equal opportunity employer. Each human being has exactly the same number of hours and minutes every day. Rich people can't buy more hours. Scientists can't invent new minutes and you can't save time to spend it on another day. Even so, time is amazingly fair and forgiving. No matter how much time you've wasted in the past, you still have an entire tomorrow. May I add, you have an entire today. I'll tell you flat out, in, in my own life, I've had to surround my life with people who push me to do some of the scary things. You say, John, how can you, you don't seem like you need to have people push you or pull you into some scary, well, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes in my life. I can guarantee you that I have purposely placed people in my life to challenge my fears, to challenge my procrastination feelings because I maybe sometimes have felt like I was unqualified or maybe that I, there was, would be somebody that was smarter or better to do the things that uh, I really had a desire to do. I think that's a great example for you too, to surround yourself with people that will pull you through some of those scary moments and those times of intimidation, those times when you frankly don't feel like getting up and doing what you need to do, because in a lot of our lives, once you reach the doorway of doing what you're afraid to do, the fear goes away. The, the fear just literally just evaporates but you have to get to the door of the opportunity if you want that to evaporate as quickly. Dale Carnegie said, who lived many years ago, he said, the best way to prepare for tomorrow is to concentrate with all your intelligence, all your enthusiasm on doing today's work superbly. That is the only way you can prepare for the future. You say, John, how does that impact my life? Well. I think you have experienced it before that you do things just to get things done instead of doing things with excellence. And I found in my own life that there are people who tend to recognize people more often for opportunities when they see people doing things with excellence. So many people do things halfway. Some people just want to be average and ordinary. As one CEO said one time, just you can call me anything you want, but don't call me average and ordinary. But I'll tell you for sure that the tendency for most of us is to regress into that average and ordinary mode. 
When you and I step back into that average and ordinary mode, then procrastination is going to be our partner. Procrastination is going to be our, our best friend. Janet Daly said one time, someday is not a day of the week. Again, someday is not a day of the week. Somebody wrote, I can't remember who, who I think it was Brian Tracy, talked about living on, on, on someday isle, that island of someday that I will do things that I need to do consistently. It's very important for you and I to develop the habits that we need to groom ourselves into doing consistently in order to see the results that we have been maybe dreaming about or seeing results in other people's lives that we thought that maybe were only for other people, that were only for the smart people or for people that were born with some wonderful set of genes. Well, I'm telling you flat out that the people that you think were born on the right side of the tracks and you may have been in your own mind born on the wrong side of the tracks, they're no better than you at all. In fact, 90% of them probably work way, way, way harder than you do. And then as a result, they have achieved some extraordinary things in their lives. Michael Landon Jr. said one time, somebody should tell us right at the start of our lives that we are dying. Then we might live life to the limit every minute of every day. Do it, I say. Whatever you want to do, do it now. There are only so many tomorrows. Again, there are only so many tomorrows. How many times haven't you watched the news and seen somebody who has been in a car accident or they became sick and passed away? Their tomorrows ended that day. I would suggest to you that if you want to maximize your life, you need to maximize every single hour. Uh, what I'm asking you to do is to push yourself to the very extreme of your potential every single hour of every day. I'm doing that in my own life and have been doing that for decades to push myself so far out of my comfort zone that these days, I've almost forgotten what it was like when I lived in the comfort zone, where I was afraid of my own shadow. I was afraid of being ridiculed. I was afraid of being laughed at because of certain struggles and anxieties and fears that I had. I have almost forgotten how terrifying it was to speak in public, because I do it now all the time. So you're gonna find if you consistently push yourself and jump out of that box every hour of every day, your literal, your, your personality your, will be transformed in such a dramatic way that you will not even recognize yourself in maybe a year or two down the road. Uh, uh, Leon, Leonardo da Vinci, you may have heard his name. He said one time, I've been impressed with the urgency of doing, he said. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. Let me share that last part. Being willing is not enough, we must do. So many people you know, maybe the person in the mirror is willing to do certain things, but you have not chosen to do certain things consistently. Let me kind of share another PS to that statement. When you do the things that you're supposed to do every now and then, it really doesn't matter. Because, I mean, it might make you feel good, but every time, every time there's a delay between you doing what you need to do and the next time you do it, meaning that let's say you do the, the right thing at the right time, you know, one day one, and the next time you do it is day 92, all that time between there, you then regress back to the point that you were in the beginning. What I'm saying is consistency is absolutely essential if you want to realize a life that is now post-procrastination, that is now post the regret of the mistakes you've made in the past in order for you to realize some of your own dreams and your own goals in your own life. William James Moore wrote one time, time is to improve is limited. Again, time to improve is limited. 
The clock is always on and doesn't care if you don't feel like it. Someone else does and they're passing you by. Again, someone else does and they're passing you by. I think sometimes, maybe not sometimes, maybe all the time, you have to literally manufacture a why that is so huge that pulls you out of bed at a certain time every day to do the things that you should be doing anyway. You say, John, what are you talking about? There are some people in the world that need a why to do what they should be doing. I know somebody, and I'm very close to this person, that I have found out that they refuse to do the hard things until they literally create a why that's so big that it forces them to do things that, the, that all this time they've been saying that I can't do that, I'm this or I'm that, I can't do that. But yet when the why is bigger, they find a way to get that done. Now I would suggest to you that that person is not the only person who has that same issue. Think about your own life. You have gone through stuff in your own life You've put up with a lot of stuff in your own life and you've just maybe thought that that's the way it was going to be forever and ever. Instead of creating a why that's big for you to do the, thing, do, to do the hard things that you should have been doing anyway. Richie Norton wrote one time, urgency makes the difference between practitioners, proclaimers, and procrastinators. Let me share that two more times. Richie Norton said, Urgency makes the difference between practitioners, proclaimers, and procrastinators. One more time. Urgency makes the difference between practitioners, proclaimers, and procrastinators. Now just, let's kind of tear that last part a, a bit about. Pro, uh, uh, practitioners are what? Experts. They're professionals. They're people who have paid the price consistently in order to become excellent at what they do. That's a, that's a person who is a practitioner, like a doctor, if you will, or a lawyer. And then you have the proclaimers, people that have a huge mouth, that talk all this smack, that really don't get a whole lot done. Okay, that's, that's the people that are proclaiming that they're all this, but they refuse to pay the price consistently. By the way, there is a price to pay consistently if you want to avoid being a procrastinator. And if you want to achieve some of the most amazing things you could ever achieve in your own life. And then, obviously, there's the procrastinators, people who keep putting off what they need to do. I would suggest to you that you, have may, that you may have been one of three of those categories. The practitioner, whereby you, you get really good at your craft. And, and that's a narrow little window in your life that, that you've really maximized. And then that other category, you, you talk all this smack, you talk all this stuff, and never really getting down to doing what you need to do consistently. And then more times than not, you and I fall into that last category of the pro procrastinators. Those people that know that they should be doing certain things, but they keep putting it off over and over and over again. Dan Pierce wrote, in a book called Single Dad Laughing. He wrote, quote, every time we look at the clock, we must learn to feel a sense of urgency. We must learn to realize that now is happening and will be gone very, very soon. We must look at the digits on the display and be overcome with an urge to do something before those digits change, before now slips through our fingers. We must look at the ink on the calendar and see an immediate opportunity to do something wonderful, incredible, or beautiful. It's that simple. We need to change our thinking from when the number changes to before the number changes. Let me share that last part. It's that simple. We need to change our thinking from when the number changes to before the number changes. There's, a, there's an author, as you can tell, I read a lot. There's an author out there that has the five second rule. She says that she, she dealt with procrastination for a large percentage of her life. 
And then she realized that if she gives herself five seconds, just five seconds to do the things that she needs to do, more times than not, she gets it done. It might mean getting out of bed at a certain time. You lay there and the alarm clock's going off and you just don't feel like getting up to do what you need to do. She counts down five, four, three, two, one, and then jumps out of bed. Or she wants to do something that's extraordinary. Well, and it's terrifying. You're, you're stepping out in uncharted water. She gives herself uh, the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, and then steps out and do what's terrifying and what's scary. You might want to try that consistently in order to overcome some of those moments in your life where, where procrastination tends to want to tackle you and, and wrestle you down and keep you being average and ordinary. Helen Keller said one time, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Again, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. Now, I, I get it. I get it. I really do. There's a percentage of people watching the show that are outgoing people. They're type A personalities. And procrastination is not even in your vocabulary. I get that. But about half of the people watching the show today are people that struggle with fear. They they struggle with anxieties. They struggle with maybe a little bit of, of lack of self-worth and self-esteem. I'm talking to you today. I'm talking to that demographic of people that struggle with the person in the mirror. They look at the person in the mirror and they wish they were somebody else. They wish they were that outgoing person that was extraordinary, that, that at least on TV or in the movies or in the books or in the magazines thought that they were all that. The more people I meet that are relatively famous and or famous and the, the books that I read by some really smart people, all of them have issues too. You, you just don't know about them. Some of us kind of share those struggles more than maybe we should, but a lot of the people that are successful in their field have struggles just like you and me. They've just learned to, to push through them consistently and push back that procrastination situation every single day. Chris Jammy wrote, most men either compromise or drop their greatest talents and start running after what they perceive to be a more reasonable success. And somewhere in between, they end up with a discontented settlement. Safety is indeed stability, but it is not progression. Let me share it again. Safety is indeed stability, but it is not progression. I think you and I, at least a percentage of people watching this show, like being safe. We like being in our little bubble where we know where our, our boundaries are, we know where the walls are in front of us and behind us and alongside of us, and nobody's going to get into that bubble. So we build these walls around us that nobody's going to hurt us instead of stepping out into the unknown and taking on projects and opportunities that are extraordinary for you to achieve, not even for you, take, take you off the conversation right now, but for the benefit of other people that truly need what you want to achieve in your life because the, 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 uh, the perks and the benefits of what you're trying to do is going to impact more people than you could possibly realize but you have to consistently push yourself past those scary moments to do the things that are not always fun. My daughter Juliana said in, uh, August, in uh, excuse me, uh, March of 2013, she said, if there's something in your way, move it. If there's something in your way, move it. Now that may sound simple. It may sound simplistic coming from a little girl. But I'm telling you that you and I tend to believe that what is, what all is, is going to be forever and ever. Instead of thinking or framing the situation that you have the ability to move the situation. You have the ability to move the mountain in your life if you want to achieve what's on the other side of that mountain bad enough. Your bad enough needs to be so huge that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get it done. You have to have a whatever it takes attitude if you truly want to overcome procrastination. And in my own life, I'll tell you, I'll tell you very candidly that I've had to push past some of the most terrifying moments in my own life where I was 
terrified in the beginning for a long time, for many, 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 many years. I was terrified of my own shadow. I was terrified of looking foolish in front of other people. Then I had to push past some moments in my life, actually a lot of moments in my life, to face the ridicule and the embarrassment of falling on my face so many times and looking foolish in front of hundreds of people. But I knew that if I didn't take the risk of looking foolish in front of so many people, then I would not be able to achieve some extraordinary things in my life, but not for me, for the benefit of other people. So as we wind up this show today, I want to quote what Carl Walenda said, life is being on the wire and everything else is just waiting. Again, life is being on the wire. Everything else is, is just waiting. So I encourage you today to push past your procrastination. Set a schedule every day. Do a, to, do, a, do a list of things that you need to do every day. Even though it's scary, even though as you write it, you don't feel like doing it, write it down anyway. And then do it every single day. And then you're going to find in a year, two, three, four, five years down the road, you're, you're going to look back and not even recognize the person in the mirror because you've come so far in an incredible way that you're then going to be able to help a lot of different people. My name is John Carver. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back real soon.